The statistics are frightening. New Orleans is being hit with a wave of violent crime at the hands of juveniles. The Orleans Parish District Attorney's Office said the surge is the city's most pressing crime problem, and police say they're tired of picking up the same kids over and over. But reformers say the old arrest and incarceration model is only fueling the crisis. Tonight, investigative reporter Mike Perlstein went straight to the kids themselves to understand why they act out. He got some alarming answers and no easy solutions in part two of our series, Criminal Crossroads. As a young adolescent, I started getting in trouble at school. I'm very angry, got in a lot of fights. Just being bullied and being, you know, ridiculed by the students. Like I didn't care about nothing. All of these youngsters have been on the wrong side of the juvenile justice system. But before falling into a spiral of arrests and incarceration, they described troubles at school that went unaddressed and troubles at home that made a bad situation worse. Because my mom got her rights taken away as a, as a parent. My adopted mom and my adopted dad divorced when I was 10. You know the story, man. Mom on drugs, dad working. I never met my real dad. The common thread is early childhood abuse, poverty, homelessness, um, neglect. For almost every kid who ends up in court, there is a gut-wrenching backstory. LSU professor Stephen Phillippe, an expert in adolescent trauma and delinquency, says these childhood landmines can lead to criminal behavior, including extreme violence. Their preference for risky behavior at, is at its all-time high during adolescence. The risk can include violent crime. One woman we talked to was rattled when her niece was held up at gunpoint by a 15-year-old, only to see the teenager back on the street committing additional robberies and even a burglary in which she became the victim. She actually confronted him later during an arrest for trespassing near her home. He had a blank stare. He didn't, he didn't really care. He didn't really care. And what does that tell you? What, what did you gather from that? Maybe he didn't have any hope. I, I really don't know, Mike, I don't know. Philippi says juveniles can be especially volatile because their brains are still developing, especially the areas responsible for decision making. The frontal lobes of the brain aren't fully developed until your early 20s. So what does that mean? Uh, it translates into poor impulse control uh, in, in, a, in a very uh, high susceptibility to peer pressure. Even the professionals are fearful. First, I would have to agree with that because I'm terrified of them myself. You know, I'm very cautious of them because they just, they acting out. Until I started acting um, very violent. If you would have just said one little thing that I didn't like, this whole room would have been destroyed. And there was just a lot of anger with me. And I'm saying my mama been on crack. Each of the youngsters we interviewed took different criminal paths. Led by an older cousin, Mike started breaking into cars and houses. Dirt bikes, four wheelers, watches, phones, games, guns. Like whatever we get our hands to, that's what we was getting. Russell sold marijuana. He started small. Next thing you know, my, 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 my clientele just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I just went from buying like quarter pounds to half a pound. I graduated up to a pound. Next thing you know, I was at five, then 10. Tyler's rap sheet begins at age 10 when he was arrested for arson. Then, confined to a group home, he attacked a staff member. I had hit him with a brick. When I hit him with a brick, I hit him with a side of the face. Tyler ended up serving five years in juvenile prison. While locked up, he joined a gang. And a lot of guys tried me, you know, messed with me constantly, constantly. And I just got tired of it. That's mostly what game affiliation comes with is protection. The youngsters we talked to faced other hardships, from displacement due to Hurricane Katrina to a lack of rehabilitation when they were locked up. They all dealt with serious psychological issues, but medication was more common than counseling. There's really no really counseling. It's more than putting you on meds. I was very suicidal. I tried to commit suicide a lot. When you were in the system, instead of getting love and support, you got meds. Yeah, a lot of them. Around the country, major reforms are sweeping through the juvenile justice system. Detention is giving way to treatment. Isolation is giving way to community programs. Medication is viewed as a last resort. Mayor Cantrell has vowed to take the same approach in New Orleans. You are not thrown away. You matter. You matter. And you meet us halfway, then we're going to put you on a path to be successful. 
but there is a major barrier on the city's path to reform. The problem is that it's funding, and we don't have the funds to create the capacity. Compare New Orleans to Jefferson Parish, which has a similar number of juveniles taken into custody each year, but only a fraction of the violent crime arrests. Through a dedicated millage, Jefferson has about three times the money for juvenile justice than Orleans, about 12 million a year, compared to 4.2 million. When you start talking about a lot of these spikes in New Orleans, um, a lot of those services are available right across the parish line in Jefferson. Uh, we're uh, at a higher rate of access than what we have in Orleans. Clerk of New Orleans Juvenile Court, Renard Derensburg, explains that while counseling and outreach programs have been introduced, funding comes from a patchwork of grants and court fees. Imagine if we had $11 million a year to devote solely to juvenile services. Currently, that is nowhere near. We have nothing to deal with juvenile services, to be honest with you. At the Covenant House, a shelter for homeless teenagers, counselors see hundreds of kids who have been through the justice system. I think they need more of coaching you know, than detention. Advisor Tyrone Smith's approach is precisely what is being recommended by reformers, but remains underfunded in New Orleans. The Covenant House is not part of the city's juvenile justice system. To let them know, you know, we love you, we care about you, we're here to support you, you know. And you turn them around, you get that light coming back on? That light would always come on. Just because the people make mistakes doesn't mean they're a bad person. It feels lovely to die that other people don't really care about me and make me want to get back on track. Now, unfortunately, the problem could get worse before it gets better. A change in state law kicks in this year, moving all 17-year-olds from adult court into the juvenile system. The law begins for nonviolent crimes next month, then violent crimes in 2020. To counteract the trend, Mayor Cantrell recently announced a major push for new initiatives through the city's Office of Youth and Families. The question is, is there going to be money for them? Well, that is the biggest question, and right now there is not. So it yet, is yet to be seen whether the council and the mayor are going to figure out a way to fund these programs. All right, until then, hang on tight. All right, thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike.